What's going on? Welcome back to the Olds Mo Bobby YouTube channel. Today, we are going to be putting this Bowtie Overdrives TV Made Easy Kit onto the Cutlass. So in the last video, I mentioned that I was still experiencing some of the same symptoms as the last go around with the transmission. Um, what I think the reason behind that is, is the spring that actuates the TV plunger within the transmission itself. I think that's a little too short. Now, Bowtie Overdrives has a lot of great information on their website, especially if you look at their um, set up your TV cable instructions. And one of the things that they talk about on there is short spring syndrome. Uh, basically, if the spring is too short within the uh, within the TV plunger setup, it doesn't push the little plunger on the inside of the transmission far enough. Enough fluid's not going to flow. You're not going to have enough pressure, and you're basically going to burn up your transmission very, very quickly. So rather than trying to drive the car hoping it fix itself, um, I got in touch with Bowtie. They said they said we have just the kit for you. Uh, I have, as I've mentioned in a previous video, I have a Holly Street Avenger carburetor. So this kit is made specifically for the Holly Street Avenger. It comes with a new TV cable, a new bracket to go underneath the carburetor, which looks a little different than what I currently have now. Uh, this is really the this is really the meat and potatoes, I guess, of the uh, TV Made Easy system. Basically, these are going to go on the throttle linkage. As you can see, I've got a lot of motion right here. Basically, the um, it's actually going to be set up this way on the linkage. The TV cable has a little ball on the end of it, right there, which fits into this little hole right here. And basically, as you can see, the range of motion is pretty extensive. So basically, it's going to control uh, how much preload I guess I have on that cable. Um, that'll help control the pressure within the transmission, and hopefully it'll uh, help us get this dialed in. Otherwise, we'll be doing this again very, very shortly. So, as always, I've got tools. Today I've got iced coffee because it's pretty nice out. I got new car parts. Let's go. Status update. I have the... Uh, pan dropped it was a little tricky because this one bolt this one bolt right there is uh, underneath the cross member I didn't get a conversion cross member when I put the transmission in I just used the same turbo 350 cross member just moved it back six inches or 12 inches or whatever it is the distance is um, but so that's dropped it is turning out to be a beautiful day hey out here in New England let's see what kills me first this car or my allergies Okay, so let's give this a shot. Hopefully you guys are going to be able to see everything I'm doing right now. What I'm working on is step one, which is remove the carburetor and gasket from the manifold. Make sure the gasket surfaces are clean before you proceed to the next step. So just taking off the carburetor. So what I've already done is I've already started taking off the linkage. Well, I already already did take off the linkage, the throttle return spring right here, taken off the throttle cable, the TV cable. Um, what I've also done is I've taken off the fuel line over on this side. Um, other than that, I think that's pretty much it. So now here we go. This bolt was already off because of the uh, because of the linkage over on this side so we'll have to replace that when we're ready that was this bolt here I think my I think the neighbors playing basketball or something. I don't know if you guys can hear that going on in the background. Look at how good that master cylinder looks. Brake lines are still a little sketchy, but 
Look at that, that is beautiful. Okay, there's our gasket. There's our carburetor. Leave that there for now. All right, next step. Install one of the two new gaskets supplied in the kit. Install the spacer plate, spacer plate top of the gasket you just installed. I think that's supposed to be on top. Install the remaining gasket on top of that. Plate must be positioned directly under the carburetor and supplied gasket. Spacers of any type, including nitrous kits, must be positioned below this plate. So that means we don't even need to move our, uh, our spacer right here. That spacer is because this is a spread bore manifold and uh, our carburetor is square bore. What the spacer does is it makes it so our square bore carburetor, where all four holes are the same size, adapts to this intake manifold. So let's grab our gaskets and our plate. I'm wondering actually if we can so this manifold looks like it doesn't have any other gasket on there. So I'm gonna say that we can take this carburetor gasket off. Can throw that one on. Now we've got our plate. This is a pretty nice plate. It's got four holes drilled for our primaries and our secondaries. It's even got a nice little engravement right there for bow tie overdrives. And so that's gotta be like that. Now we've got our next gasket right there. Right, install one of the two new gaskets supplied. Install the spacer plate, install the remaining gasket. Plate must be directly under the carburetor, which it will be. Spacers of any type must be below this plate. Bam. All right, put the carburetor back on the manifold. <clears throat> okay. Huh. This is very interesting now. I don't think I'm going to have enough. I don't think I'm going to have enough thread on there to engage these bolts or engage these nuts. These nuts. <laughs> right. Let's try this again. We've got some other bolts to try out here. As you can see, these are just a touch longer than the other ones. These should be exactly what we need. Actually, I'm not sure if you can see that. These are just a touch longer than the other ones. This should be exactly what we need. Big shout out to Russell for coming through with these. Let's see how these work. Pro tip, when you're uh, putting bolts or when you're putting a spacer on your car, putting a spacer on your intake for your carburetor, Throw the, uh, throw the nut on the bolt just a little bit, just to prevent it from falling through. Otherwise, you can see on, on the other side, this has this little hex-shaped area to fit through, sort of like the other bolt on top. Um, if, you don't have your, uh, if you don't have your nut on there, obviously it's just gonna fall right through, and potentially into your intake, which would be a borderline disaster. So, save yourself a bunch of time and trouble. Throw the nut on there. Doesn't have to be on there super tight. Doesn't have to be on there super far. Now I can do this and nothing's gonna fall through or fall into my manifold.
right? And then you can just sort of line up your holes, make sure all of your all of your screws are seated right. Make sure all your bolts are seated right. This is good and flat. Now we can take these off and not worry about dropping a nut in our intake. I also need to see if I have my old throttle linkage because if I don't, that's a whole other fiasco. That's definitely not it. That definitely is it. Look at that. Who to thunk? What you doing, babe? So Just star fishing. Mm -hmm. Here's where we're at. This may look a little janky to some people, and that's because it is. So this is the factory. Uh, this is the factory bracket that um, it did not fit. You can see there's a little notch right there. That was interfering with this. So what I did is I basically stacked bolts in a or stacked nuts in a washer here to try to lift it above that. I don't think it's going to affect the geometry because it's just going to hook up to here. Um, so that's about where we're at. So carburetor is on. Good and tightened down. Now for the next step. Install the back plate section of the linkage adapter. Bring it in from the back side of the linkage as shown. Index it into position around the carburetor linkage as shown in the far right picture. All right, so that looks like that's there. All right, position the spacer plate piece of the linkage adapter. As shown in the picture on the left, simply turn the middle plate until the four bolt holes line up. So that's that right there. Face plate. Position the front face plate of the linkage adapter over the linkage as shown in the picture on the left. When correctly positioned, this face plate will index over the extruded raised area hole on the linkage. Congratulations, you now have the mounting plate, linkage adapter, cam, and have the TB cable installed. Now refer to the TB cable instructions. Alright, so now the rest of this stuff is going to be underneath the car. I'm going to turn this off for a little while, uh, but I will sort of illustrate as best I can what I'm doing. Um, or at least to give you guys a summary once I'm done. Okay, so I figured here was a good place to uh, stop and talk a little bit about what I was talking about before. This spring right here is the one that came out of the transmission. This is the one that's going to be going in. So before when I was talking about uh, short spring syndrome, you can see this spring is just slightly shorter than this one. That could be the reason why the transmission was not behaving the way that we wanted to. So now hopefully with this one going back in, this is gonna be what's gonna actuate the uh, TV plunger and actuate the, uh, the fluid pressure within the transmission. Hopefully that will correct our problem. All right, so back out here again for another day of working on the Cutlass and you might notice it's not in the garage. That is because it's sitting outside waiting to be driven. So we came back up today, 
Uh, yesterday I had left the car with the pan uh, sort of unbolted. I had only had a couple bolts on there so that way it would uh, just protect it from any dust or anything like that. Um, so we got that bolted up, we filled it full of fluids, we did the uh, pressure test for the TV cable, everything looks great. So now I'm about to take it for a test drive, see how it runs, and uh, who knows, maybe we'll be driving it home today. All right, just back from the test drive, everything went awesome. The car performed exactly the way that it was supposed to. Uh, the pressure test that we did, we were like right at the optimal level. Uh, unfortunately, as you'll notice, sitting behind me, the Cutlass is back in the garage. What I noticed when I was out driving the car is that there was huge billows of smoke behind me. Personally, it wasn't like head gasket or black smoke, which would mean something was on fire. But what was happening when I got back to the house, I got back underneath the car. Um, I think when I filled the transmission full of fluid, I put in too much. It's leaking out of the pan. Uh, and basically what it was doing is it was just running down the exhaust and burning off. So. That is going to be another project for next time. It should just be as easy as tilting the pan a little bit and letting some of that fluid run out of there. But either way, the car runs and drives great. If you guys are thinking about doing a 204R swap, I would say no matter what, go for the Bowtie Overdrive's TV Made Easy kit. It was super easy to install, super easy to adjust. The instructions are very detailed. They give you lots of pictures. Cannot recommend that system highly enough. I mean, I spent maybe four hours the other day that included dropping the pan and draining the fluid, swapping everything over, setting everything up, and basically getting the car ready to run minus the pan and the fluid. So it was super, super easy, super affordable. Customer service there was great. I very highly recommend Bowtie Overdrive's TV Made Easy kit. But for now, that's it for this video. If you like what you've seen, please go ahead and click the like button down below. If you want to keep up with the build, we're getting really close to finishing it up, go ahead and subscribe. And if you know anybody that likes old cars, likes projects, likes Oldsmobile specifically, go ahead and share this video with them. But for now, I'll see you next time.